What's going on everyone? Train Freak here and today we're going to talk about how I earned the Certificate of Achievement for Model Railroad Engineer in the Electrical Division through the National Model Railroad Association. This is my first certificate out of all of the possible certificates for uh, the NMRA Achievement Program. And the first one to go towards me eventually trying to become a master model railroader. So let me share with you everything that I did. So that way if you're interested in doing this too, you can actually see how easy it is to do something like this. So before we show everything on the layout, let's go over the um, requirements first. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and go over the requirements that are required on this. So the first thing you have to do is you have to construct and demonstrate on your own or someone else's layout. It could be a club's layout. A satisfactory operation of an electrical control system on a model railroad capable of simultaneously an independent control of two mainline trains in either direction. Okay, so if you're DC power, you have to have five blocks that can be controlled independently, or in my case, DCC. You just need to gap switches and phases for troubleshooting. You have to have either a reverse loop Y turntable or transfer table. You have to have a passing siding, or if you have a double main, just make sure that you have enough crossovers so that way you can simulate a passing siding. Uh, you need some type of facility for storing at least two unused motor power units. Um, staging works with that. Uh, one yard with a minimum of three tracks and a switching lead independent of the main line and a power supply with protective devices such as short indication circuit breakers to ensure safe operation. Then the next thing you got to do is you have to wire and demonstrate the electrical operation of at least three of the following track items where it could be a turnout, a crossing, a crossover, double crossover, single slip switch, gauge separation turnout, double junction turnout, a three-way turnout, a gauntlet turnout, spring switch, operating switch in an overhead, or there is a classification for other, which in this case I used a double slip switch. Then after that you have to wire and demonstrate the satisfactory electrical operation of at least three of the following features. That could include electrical turnouts positions, track occupancy, cab control, engine terminal, two turnout junctions, high frequency lighting, electronic throttle, gray crossing, two-way block signaling, operating an overhead wire, computer control animated displays, layout lighting displays, command control receivers, command control throttle bus, sound in a locomotive, a sound system, signaling system, CTC system, Onboard video system, a computerized block detection, computerized operation, a computer to railroad interface or other based on if it's approved by your AP director. The fourth item on the docket is then you have to prepare a schematic drawing of the propulsion circuitry of the model railroad in section one showing your gaps, blocks, feeders, speed, direction control, electrical switches, and power supplies. After you do that, then you have to basically do the same thing of the three items that you did in requirement two. That's the different type of uh, switch or trackage, uh, such as a turnout. And then the three items that you did in requirement number three, which is all the electrical accessories. And then the last thing you have to do is submit the completed statement of qualifications, which should include the track plan in requirement one with all of the things mentioned on it. The description of the track work features uh, that you used and the method of construction and identification of commercial components used in requirements number two and three and then have signed witness uh, cer certification from showing that each of the above items are operational and meet all the applicable NMRA standards that was done by your NMRA member that witnessed the operation of your layout. And then after you do all that, you submit it in and you hope that it gets approved. And if not, they'll tell you what you're lacking and you can, you know, try to complete what you're lacking in. But you can go to the NMRA's website and find all of this information.
now that we went through all the requirements let me show you which ones that i chose and how i was able to earn the certificate for the electrical achievement program uh, certificate okay so as we start i'm just going to basically show you the different areas of my layout so that way you can kind of get an understanding of how this all works so we have staging here um, i have a nce ProCab system with a CP6. I have uh, blocks 5 and 6 on my CP6 tied together and that is what protects uh, the staging area or otherwise I call it Jonesboro which you can see I have Jonesboro there. And then the next phase on the layout is going to be really the upper main line and which actually includes all the wiener uh, here you can see I have a reversing loop, so actually this train here would go through the backdrop and it would actually come out, you can see where there's two tracks there, so the left track goes to staging, the right track actually, like I said, comes over here, and this is still under construction, so you have to excuse the mess, and you're kind of getting some previews to the next layout update when I do come out with that, um, but Mainly, I mean, it's just two industries here in the main line coming all the way around. This is the town of Wiener. So you can see that we got it there. And yes, Arkansas does have a city called Wiener. For those that are new to the channel, there's my Golden Spike Award that I earned uh, November the 7th of 2022. We're into the town of Hickory Ridge. Now the main line, like I said, that is still on the, uh, it's actually on phase one. Uh, the uh, CP6. Phase 2 is actually going to be everything that is off the main line here in Hickory Ridge. So we have a small little marshalling yard, one little small locomotive storing track, um, and then of course we have a couple more industries here, and then Phase 3 will be the town of Brinkley, except for the main is still on Phase 2, keep in mind. Um, but the town of Brinkley has an interchange yard with a few industries that are not built yet. You can see a track go through the wall there that goes to the Rock Island staging, which I've got my Rock Island locomotive there. And so that's tied in with Brinkley, so that's phase three. Phase four um, <clears throat> is going to be the helix that is not built in the middle of the room yet. Um, but I do have a wire hanging below the layout right there that is long enough, that's track bus that's long enough to reach over there. Um, and so when the main line starts going into the helix, then that will be uh, phase four. And then, of course, the bottom deck of the layout, which is not built yet, we'll get to that in future episodes, probably... A year or two down the road depending on where I'm at with things um, that will be on a separate CP6 so I'm just kind of showing you overall we went over the reversing loop some of the other items um, passing sightings so if you have a double main like I do as long as you have crossovers you know I got a set of crossovers there at Hickory Ridge. I'm actually going to kind of redo that. I've got a double crossover here. And then even if we pan back around, what I'm going to end up doing is moving this crossover way down there. Okay? But I also have another set of crossovers here in Brinkley. So as long as you have crossovers on your double main, that counts. Okay? Then the next thing that you needed, uh, facilities for storing at least two unused motor power units. Staging counts. You can use staging. And my staging allows me to store two, four, six, eight, nine, nine locomotives, plus I have a tenth one being stored right there. Okay? So that staging, it counts. Um... If you don't have a staging yard, use some type of engine facility, a roundhouse, diesel house, you name it. Uh, then you had to have a yard with a minimum of three tracks and a switching lead independent of the main line. So 
mine doesn't have a technical independent lead, but I'm going to go ahead and explain how I was able to get this passed off. We have an interchange yard here, okay, guys? And there's four tracks. You can see that. Now, I have two railroads that come and switch with this interchange. I have the Rock Island here, and then the Cotton Belt would use this line here. Because I'm using a double main, the right track can act as an independent. In other words, what they're saying in the requirements is they don't want it to be where you cannot do any switching and foul the main. So as long as I'm only using one track and not both tracks, then it counts. So that's how I was able to get signed off on that requirement. Okay, let's go over the last one. And I think that had to do with the CP6. Yeah, power supply with protective devices. Uh, the NCE Pro Cab has built-in circuit protection, but I wanted something even more advanced so that way if part of the layout was to shut down, it would only shut down a section and not the whole thing due to a short. All right. All right, guys, so I've got one of my locomotives here. This is my Cotton Belt FP7. I'm actually going to go ahead and mute it. So that way you can hear me a little bit better, but what I'm going to demonstrate now is just moving a locomotive between the crossover, a turnout, and the double slip. Now the thing is with the crossover, it has to go through all four sections. Turnout, of course, through, and then diverge is fine. And then when we get to the double slip, we'll have to go up, slip over, straight through, and then slip back down, and we'll end about right here, okay? So this was one of the next things I had to do. So these are my three different trackage types. <clears throat> now my locomotives have a little bit of momentum, so I'm going to try to do this without it going too far. Okay, so I probably need to... Uh, Maybe hit my direction a little sooner. Kind of hard to do when you don't have the sound because you really don't know what you're expecting. Okay. And right now, all of these switches are all hand thrown. Eventually, I will have tortoises over here, but I'm going to be replacing all these switches with hand lay too. Alright, so you can see we made it through the crossover with no problem now we're going to back up and we're going to go through the regular turnout and i'm just getting my double slip ready to go All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and finish up the turnout. We'll start with the double slip. So we're just gonna kinda of go straight through, go to that next turnout, we'll stop. We're gonna slip over to this turnout over here. Now we're going to come over here to track one. And then last but not least, we're going to try not to connect to these cars and we're going to slip back out onto the yard entrance. And that's all I had to do as far as getting the operation of the crossover, a single turnout, and a double slip up and going. Okay, so now we're going to go over the three electrical accessories that I used. And, you know, we went over that list, so there's so many different ones you could use. But the first one I used was turnout aspect position. 
So this is my LCC uh, system that I use with RR circuits to control my block occupancy, to also control the aspects of my turnout, and I have these buttons in my fascia. So you can see there is a signal that it's right now it is set as an approach, and that's because there is a track lined up in staging. Uh, with a locomotive on it, so that's why there's a, or actually no, it's an empty track. I have it wired to be approach. Um, if it was a track that had a locomotive on it, it would be red over red. Um, but right now the turnout is in the closed position. So what we're going to do, and we can barely see the lot, but I'm going to go ahead and hit this button here. Alright, so now that you see the button change to red, the turnout or the signal over here also changed red over red and that's because I have a locomotive sitting over here. So if I came over here to this locomotive and let's uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and we're just going to gently take the trucks off the tracks right here. It don't completely fall over first probably not the smartest thing to do but it'll stay it don't it has a drawbar between them now look at there it went to red over yellow but you know that has to do with block detection but i just wanted to show that just hitting this button here i can change the aspects of my signals and you can see when a turnout is thrown or if it's straight. All right, so that's the first one. The second one I did was animated signage. And I'm probably going to have to turn the light off or we'll turn the light down, see if we can see it. And we'll get a close to it and you get to see the mess underneath the layout. But this is a sign from Miller Engineering. And I have it wired up to track power. Um, so there is a device under here on the layout and you can see it right there. And so the first little card here with the white wires, that's actually ran up to that. So that it's being powered by track power. So animated displays, that one counts. And then the last thing, a locomotive with sound. And I ended up using my Alco RS. So let's turn this guy on. Well, I need to select the right one first. So. Okay. So you can see the headlight. We'll let it start up in the startup phase. And there is a cab or light that I did wire in the cab. Um, I don't, I think it has to do with the camera frames as the lights flickering, but to the naked eye, it does not flicker. And let's see here. So we've got a horn, bell. So we do have sound in it. And I even added night effects. So you can see that the number boards light up, but I also added ground lights. Okay, so those are my three accessories that I used um, for, for this certificate. So now we get to the fun part, and that's explaining all of the different diagrams. Okay, so we're going to start off with the schematic of the layout, and you can see that the track is actually in different colors, and for good reason, because this is what represents the different phases of the layout as a whole. So, for phase 5 and 6, we're going to start at Jonesboro, like we did in the video earlier. I have those two phases tied in together. Um, so for those who don't know, the CP6 only does one amp protection for each block, but you can actually solder jumpers to multiple blocks for higher protection. So phases 5 and 6 are tied together. 
I actually get two ants of protection there. The uh, yellow area that basically all the wiener, the main line at Hickory Ridge, Brinkley, all the way to the helix, that is actually in phase one. Phase two, represented in lime green, is the industrial complex over at Hickory Ridge. Then we have phase three, which is in sky blue. That is actually Brinkley and the Rock Island staging area. And then there's a little bit of sliver of red that you see there, and that's actually going down two into the helix. And that is going to be phase four. So everything else you're going to see as far as schematics are, are going to be hand drawn. So enjoy trying to decipher my chicken scratch. But here you can see that at the upper left corner we start off with a 15 amp outlet. We go into a lighted indicated switch. that, And then it goes into a surge protector. And I have different devices on the surge protector. And these are just different power supplies that go to various different uh, things. Um, you can see one of them goes to the first command station, one goes to a booster, then one goes to the LCC system, and another one goes to the Woodland Scenics Just Plug Lighting, which I kind of gave an example of some of the different things, and that's actually the community barn that I actually drew up there that has four lighted uh, aspects in that area. The uh, command station and the booster are connected together by a control bus, the command station is also connected to a wireless uh, antenna for different throttles, and it's also connected to my computer via an RS-232 or a serial connection. Um, both the booster and the uh, command station go to different tracked areas, and so that's another way of separating the layout even more. And you can see the CP-6, um, and you can see where I did jump you know put jumpers on five and six there and instead of trying to do a full drawing you can kind of see where i broke the sections up and showed now the green is supposed to represent uh you know one of the rails and the red represents the other rail then to finish up this area is i drew like a you know a little section that shows the reversing loop where i actually have a digitrax ar1 wired off of the uh, track bus and you know with a couple of jumpers on it because the reversing loop is actually two different blocks so that's why I had to do it that way then the next thing you're going to see is the different turnouts that I used as far as uh, you know for crossovers and the double slip you know how it's all wired up even through the different you know the tortoises that goes to the SMD8 on the LCC system, um, the Pico double slip was really the only one that was not wired up to anything at that point. Okay, so here we're going to start off with the LCC system for the uh, button control. You can see we got the LCC PowerPoint that goes into a signal LCCS that goes into a quick link board, which is what my button is connected to. That goes into an SMD8, and then the SMD8 goes over to a tortoise. And so that is how the LCC system works as far as just pressing that one individual button to throw the turnout. The animated sign concept was actually really easy. It's just mainly you got the converter module, the 4804 wired to the track, and then you just run power wires to the, uh, the thing that the, the battery connector on these actual animated signs would be connected to. And I went ahead and just simulated that I had a second animated sign but it's just not installed yet and then lastly we did the decoder install and you can see that this is a soundtrack tsunami 2 pmp 8 board with uh, two different mini cube speakers that just basically show you know all the different connections how it's all wired and soldered up and if you're actually curious to see a video on it um, i will link that up in the card in the upper right of the screen so that way you can go to that um you know and see how you know i wired it up and there's actually a fun tip i ended up frying the first uh, decoder in there because i tried adding that current keeper so basically in a nutshell after i did everything that was required on the form and you know submitted all the paperwork in that you know the last thing is that pdf that you have to print and it's kind of like your checklist, but it's also got a spot where, you know, anyone who witnessed what you did, 
they put their name and their member numbers down as well and then you just um, you can either mail it in or do what I did and just scan it and send it you know get with your AP chair on how they want or prefer you to do it and then you know after it was submitted a month later here we go uh, I got my certificate of achievement um, in the mail and so went ahead got it framed and there's the first one out of the seven ones that I need. So now the next one I'm working on is scenery. And you can see where I've gotten a start on it. And I'm going to literally have to get this whole area all the way up here to where the sewing thread is. Straight back. So I have to have all of that fully done for the next certificate that I'm working on. So if you are interested in... Me doing a video on that in the future, make sure that you hit that thumbs up to let me know that you liked the content that I put out, find it, you know, informational and useful for you, and, you know, make sure you, you subscribe and fill in the bell so that way when I do end up doing this video that you'll be notified, all right? So, other than that, that's pretty much it for today's video as far as me showing you how I earned my Model Railroad Engineer Electrical Certificate. So other than that, y'all be safe out there. I hope y'all have a great week and happy railroading.